Joe James. In this video we're going to cover the tournament sort. Tournament sort is very similar to a heap sort or min heap. It's an extremely fast sorting algorithm. It runs in big O of n log n time. It's often used by SQL because it can run using less memory. So it can store some of the data on disk while it's sorting the rest of the data. It's good for sorting very large data sets. So let's take a look at the tournament sort. Here we have a list of integers 1 through 12 and since as you'd expect we're going to have a tree to sort. So we'll start loading our integers in, our list from the left. The 10, the 4, the 12, and the 9 are loaded into the leaf nodes and then our comparisons start. So we're going to use uh, the, take the min of 10 and 4. The 4 is going to move up a node and then we're going to backfill that with the next item on the list which is 3. So we have to take the min of 3 and 4. 3 swaps places with the 4, and then we compare the 12 and the 9. The 9 is lower, so it moves up. We fill in the 1, and then we have to compare the 9 and the 1. The 1 is smaller, so it swaps places with the 9. Now we compare the 3 and the 1. The 1 is smaller, so it moves into the root node. The 9 and the 12. The 9 moves up, and then the 7 here moves into that open spot left by the 9. And then we have to compare the 7 to its parent node, the 9. We see that the 7 is smaller than the 9, so they swap places. We compare the 7 to the 1. The 7 is in its right place. So now we have a filled tree. It's a proper min heap, so the smallest item is on top, and every item is smaller than the items below it. Now we're going to start an output list. We're going to pop the first item off of the top of the heap, which is the 1. We're going to add that to our output list. Now we take the min of the 3 and the 7. The 3 is smaller, so it moves up. The min of the 4 and the 10. The 4 is smaller, so it moves up. And the 8 is going to move into the open leaf. Now that we have one item in our output list, every time we add an item from the input list to a root node, we have to first check and see, is this item smaller than the last item we added to the list, which in this case is 1. So we're going to compare the 8 to the 1. No, the 8 is not smaller than the 1, so we just continue. We'll see what happens if it is smaller later. So now we need to bubble the 8 up to its proper position. We compare the 8 to the 4, and 8 is larger than 4, so it doesn't move up. So now we can pop the next item off the top of the heap. Our next winner is the 3. And then we compare the 4 and the 7. The 4 is smaller, so it moves up. The 8 moves up, and the 6 takes that spot. So the first thing we do again when we add an item to the leaf node, we check if 6 is smaller than the last item we added to the output, 3. No, it's not. 6 is greater than 3, so we don't need to worry about this yet. Now we compare 6 to its parent node, and yes, it's smaller, so they swap places, 6 and 8. We compare 6 to the 4, the 6 is larger, so the 6 is bubbled up to its proper position in the heap. So now we have a good heap again. We can pop the top item off the list. Our next winner is a 4, so we'll compare the 6 and the 7. The 6 is smaller, so it moves into the root node. The 10 and the 8. The 8 is smaller, so it takes the space where the 6 was. And we're going to move this 11 into that spot. First thing we do when we move that 11 into the spot, we have to compare 11 to the last item that we added to the output, which is 4. Is 11 smaller than 4? No, so we don't need to worry about that. Now we can compare 11 to 8. 11 is in its proper position. It's not smaller than 8. So we have a good heap again. We can pop the first uh, item off the list, and that's 6. The top of the heap we have a 6. We add that to the end of our output list. Now we're going to restructure our heap. We're going to move the 7 up because it's smaller than 8. The 9 is smaller than the 12, so it'll move up. And then the 5 is going to come into that spot left open by the 9 on the leaf node. First thing we do here is we compare the 5 to the 6. Is 5 smaller than 6? Yes, 5 is smaller than 6. So what we're going to do is flag the 5. You cannot compete, right? So 5 cannot compete. And the reason for this, we want our output list to be in sorted order. In other words, every item is smaller than all the items to its right. But if we let this 5 bubble up to the top, and we pop that off of the heap and add it to the right of the 6, then we will not have a sorted output list. So we have an item that is smaller than the last item that we added. We don't want to pop that item off of the, the heap. So we're just going to flag the 5 and say, hey, you don't get to compete. You have to sit this round out. So we're going to flag that by uh, marking it as black. 
And we'll just go ahead and pop the next item off the top of the heap, which is 7. We'll take the lower of the two, uh, 8 and 9 there, and we move the 8 to the top. We move the 10 up because it's smaller than 11. We move the 2 into our last leaf node there. And we compare 2 to the 7. Is 2 smaller than 7? Yes, it is. So 2, you're not allowed to compete. Now we've actually added every item from our input list into the heap already. So everybody has already joined the tournament. We only have two items that are flagged as cannot compete, but all the other items are in a heap and we can one by one just pop them off and add them to the output list. So we'll do that and what we get is one output list uh, with numbers 1 through 12 excluding the 2 and the 5 and an empty heap. Now we may have had more input numbers down here if we had a big, huge input list and we got four items here that are flagged as do not compete, that would block us from taking any more items in, right? So once we have either four items here flagged as do not compete or we run out of input items, then the first round stops. In this case, we ran out of input items before we, we closed off all four input pipelines. So that's one list on the output. That's one run. We did one run and we got one output list. Now we'll do one more run and we'll start a new output list for the rest of the items. So this is a separate list. Look, we only got two and five. Like I said, we may have had many output lists. We could have 50 output lists. In this case, we only have two, but we ran out of items. So we'll take these output lists now and feed them back in to the tournament sort. So these are both sorted lists now. We're going to feed them into the bottom of the tournament sort. The first output list will feed into the leftmost leaf node and the second output list will feed into the second leaf node and then we'll just have a tournament between these two items and we'll pop them off and we'll add them to an output list and as we do that we can see that we're going to get a fully sorted list on the output 1 through 12. Now we did this with just three iterations. We did two runs and then we took those two outputs and fed them back through a third time. We basically just did three runs to get a fully sorted output list. If we have a really long input list we may have needed to do more runs. Now you can also use a larger tree, right? We only have four leaf nodes here. We could have used more leaf nodes and used a larger heap. That is a function really of memory, how much memory you have. If you have a lot of memory to do this sort with, then you can make a larger tree so you can load more items into it at a time. But we wanted to do a small demo with a pretty small tree. So with just three iterations and uh, four leaf nodes, we were able to do um, to sort the numbers 1 through 12. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them below. I hope uh, you'll subscribe to my channel. I'm Joe James. Thanks for watching.